I installed an official version of SteamOS on this $220 gaming PC that I recently put together using parts from eBay, and you can do the same thing. This isn't a hacked version of SteamOS or anything like that. This was actually installed on this PC using the Steam Deck recovery image. And as you can see, we've got SteamOS Hollow. It's actually SteamOS 3.8. And what we've got here is a super budget build capable of running AAA games at 1080p. Some of the older stuff, you could take it up if you want to, but the real draw to this is just ease of use using SteamOS from somewhere like a couch. For the base of this build, I used an Optiplex 770. I picked this up on eBay. You can get them pretty cheap. This one has the i7-9700, but there are some over there with the i5-9500s. And uh, I mean, that one's got six cores, six threads. This has eight cores, eight threads. If you can get the 9700, I would highly recommend it. We've also got a 260 watt power supply. This came with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. That's most of the configurations out there that you'll find on eBay. Now, one of the main drawbacks to this machine is the power supply. They do offer some upgrades out there and you can actually install your own using an adapter. But I wanted to keep this as cheap as possible. And when running SteamOS, your best bet is an AMD GPU. So I went with the Radeon RX 5500 XT with eight gigs of VRAM. One of the reasons I went with this instead of the RX 580 is just newer architecture, uh, better driver support, and it does draw less power. So a maximum of around 120 watts from this 5500 XT. So we can use that stock power supply along with the SATA to an eight pin PCIe connector. The stock power supply in this thing is 260 watts. The CPU is gonna pull only 65 watts. And of course, like I mentioned that GPU up to 120. So yeah, we've got enough power with that stock power supply. And I'm gonna be using one of these SATA to eight pin power connectors. You can get these for eight to $10 on Amazon. And when running something like this, I would not run SATA drives along with it. So we're just gonna be running strictly from the M.2 SSD, but we'll have enough power for this 5500 XT and that i7-9700. Another GPU I actually thought about here was the RX 6500 but unfortunately the only ones that I've found have four gigs of VRAM. And in my opinion, eight gigs is a must, even at 1080. Some of the newer stuff just doesn't perform well on four gigs. So we've got eight gigs with this unit here and it all fits right inside of this Optiplex 770. And to put something like this together, including the Optiplex, the power adapter that we're gonna be using with that stock power supply and GPU, you can actually get out under $230 if you check out eBay. The Optiplex 770 with that i7-9700 bids out at around $135. I actually got mine for $132 shipped to the house. And when it comes to the GPU, they're a little all over the place, but if you keep your eye out for bids on eBay, you can come in under $80 for this GPU. And I did overspend a little bit. I do think it's around a $65 GPU right now in 2025, but other people who are selling them don't think so. There's a couple different, very similar operating systems we could use, but like I mentioned, we wanted to go with the official SteamOS version. So I used the Steam Deck recovery image from their website. I just followed the instructions. I had a USB drive and I used an application known as Rufus to flash it to the USB, installed it just like I would with any operating system from a USB drive, and I'm up and running with this system. So far, this system's been working way better than I ever thought it would. And like I mentioned, this is real Steam OS. It's not Bazite. This is actually from the Steam Deck recovery image. I've gone in and updated to Steam OS 3.8. And I'll show you from our settings. If we go to system here, move on down. It is using Steam Hollow 3.8. We've got that valve 6.11.11 kernel here. And you can see that we've got that Intel Core i7-9700, so we've got eight cores, eight threads, up to 4.7, and that's really on a single core. And of course, the Radeon RX 5500 XT with eight gigs of VRAM. This is gonna be important. I would not go with four gigs on something like this, even for 1080p gaming. We know that the 5500 XT is definitely a lower tier card, but for the price and the performance we're seeing here, this seems to be a good option for these DIY Steam machines. So I've got a bunch of stuff that I want to test here. And you know, we've got all of the options that we do on the Steam Deck, except for TDP control on this desktop from here. So under performance, it's going to be at zero watts. We can't control the GPU clock, but we do have system-wide FSR, HDR, VRR, and I can go ahead and disable this. If your display supports it, it should work pretty well from here. 
But one thing that I've been using on handhelds with SteamOS installed is Simple Decky TDP. I've got it turned off because it does a good job. I mean, this will go up to 65 watts. If we enable it, you can see we've got up to 65 there. Manual controls, got our performance governor here. But for this, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and disable it because it will boost up as high as it needs to right now. But yeah, I mean, we've got a lot of options here. And if you wanted to, you could definitely use this as a desktop PC. We've still got the desktop built in here, just like on the Steam Deck. But now I think it's time to get into some gaming. And the first one we have here is Cyberpunk 2077. So right now I'm at 1080p Steam Deck preset, and I'll show you that actually takes FSR to balanced video at 1080, and we're seeing over 70 FPS on the 5500 XT. Of course, this is not gonna be a full-fledged 4K gaming machine, but for the price, I wasn't expecting it. Actually, it does better than I thought, even at that Steam Deck preset. But there are some technologies here that still work with this card that'll allow us to get a much higher frame rate if you want to. And of course, I'm talking about frame generation. And in some cases, even at 1080 on this 5500 XT with newer games, you're gonna need it. And you shouldn't feel bad about using frame gen on a super cheap PC like this. It's not a $1,000 or $2,000 GPU. And I think that this is a really good use case scenario for frame generation, other than running frame generation on a $2,500 GPU. I mean, we're working with a GPU under 80 bucks that was released a few years ago and it really helps out with a lot of this stuff. I'm now at high settings instead of that Steam Deck preset, getting over 90 FPS on average. Next one we have here is The Witcher 3 1080 high settings with FSR set to quality. And I'll show you from our video settings. We'll go up here, make sure we're at high, FSR 2, quality, and moving on down right there. 1080, no dynamic resolution scale. And I'll tell you, I was a little worried going into this one. I wasn't sure how it was gonna perform, but we're getting over 75 FPS on average with it. And with this game, we don't have official access to something like AMD's frame generation, and we really don't even need it here. I also wanted to test out Doom Eternal, and this always works really well inside of Steam. We're at 1080 high with no resolution scale. I've got the in-game stats up in the top right hand corner, and I mean, we're seeing some great performance with this one also. Taking it up to something a bit newer, we've got Spider-Man 2, 1080 high settings, FSR frame gen on, and with it off, you will have to drop this down to medium settings, 900p to get over that 60 hump. But as you can see at high 1080 with frame gen on, we're seeing averages in the mid 80s with it. Borderlands 3, 1080p, high settings. And I'll tell you, this wasn't without a couple issues here and there. So recently, within the last couple months, I've noticed that with newer AMD drivers, there's a lot of hitching going on. And it is here. I'm not sure if you can really see it on video. It feels a bit funky every once in a while. And I've seen it quite a bit on lower end GPUs. But for the most part, I mean, if you're just looking at that frame rate, we're seeing over 78 FPS on average.
And for the final game, I wanted to run this without any frame generation. I mean, most new AAA games are going to have access to AMD's frame gen, which is obviously going to help out with this lower end system. But a game like this at high 1080 with FSR set to balanced actually runs over 60. Got an average of 63 with it. Kind of right on the edge, so I would probably drop this down to medium. Still an absolutely beautiful game, but when we're talking about frame gen, we're up in the mid 90s, high settings 1080. So overall, yeah, this definitely works out with official Steam OS installed. And you know, if you wanted to go a bit higher end, you could go with something like a 6600 XT, but then you'll have to worry about power supply constraints and things like that. And that's one of the big reasons I went with that 5500 XT. Also pricing on that card right now over on eBay. This system is definitely not gonna be for everybody, but if you know what you're getting into, this could be a nice little cheap budget setup to get you by until you can afford something a bit more powerful. But either way, once I put this together and saw how it performed, I was pretty impressed with it. So I figured I'd go ahead and make a quick video. And if this is something you're interested in, I will leave links in the description to all the parts I used for this setup. And I will have a full SteamOS installation video coming up really soon on the channel. I was going to hold off a little while because uh, in the next couple months, we're going to get that official beta. But I've had a lot of people asking about it, so I will make one of those. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If there's anything else you want to see running on this machine, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.